Hey everybody, I am going to be creating a art journal page for you. I just wanted to touch a little bit on the title. It is Be Kind to Yourself and I think that is very important and I think we often forget about ourselves. You know, we teach our kids to be kind to one another, to treat strangers um, nicely and I try to teach my kids too to be kind to yourself how you speak to yourself is very important because you spend the most time with you so how you talk to yourself you know in your inner self is really important i think that if someone were to tell you the things sometimes we tell ourselves we would be furious so i think it's important to really think about how we talk to ourselves and how we treat ourselves not just how we talk to ourselves but you know, just we need to just not be so hard on ourselves, I think. And I know this is a little deep for my videos, but I just think that it's really important, especially with the new year, we can really focus on um, just being positive people and being nice to one another as well as being nice to ourselves because I think it is probably more important to be kind to ourselves than it is to other people because if we're kind to ourselves then it's definitely going to um, reflect how we treat others how positive we are throughout our day all right I'm going to finish with two little quotes this one says be kind to yourself be gentle with your soul learn to accept yourself and love yourself for all that you already are the next one is be nice to yourself. It's hard to be happy when someone's mean to you all the time. And I honestly am not sure why I'm getting all therapeutic in this video. I think there's a reason. Maybe somebody out there needs to hear this. I know for myself, it's really um, made me think about how I treat myself, how I talk to myself, and maybe it will help somebody as well. So with all of that said, I am going to start on the project. All right, so you saw me add a coat of gesso to the pages and I'm using a mixed media book from Prima. This is probably one of my favorites to use uh, when I art journal. And I took the pages out and I could easily put them back in. After that dried, I added some crackle paste to the left upper hand corner and then the bottom right corner and I let that dry completely before adding um, my stamping and these are just little dollar stamps from Prima. I think they're like $1.50 or something. They're really cheap and I love having them on hand because they're small. I can bend them and kind of create a lot of texture in, for my backgrounds for art journaling or crap, you know whatever project I'm working on. I use VersaFine Onyx Black Ink to stamp um, on my pages. Now I am adding some light paste and this is a Prima stencil. I believe it's called wood texture or wood grain number two. Uh, I will have all of the supplies listed down below and then also over on my website if you are wondering what I use. And I do apologize if anything is discontinued. Sometimes if you can search, if you're good at that, then you might find something that I use if it is discontinued, but I just try to use what's in my stash. And a lot of the things that I absolutely love are old and they are um, not available sometimes or not as easily available. But I do try to link as much as possible for you guys. All right, so I am trying to keep with the composition that I have in my head to where the a lot of the texture and color is going to be on the upper uh, left-hand corner and then the bottom right-hand corner. And that's why, you know, the middle is, I want to keep it as white as possible. It's a little hard because there is splatters of color, but um, I'll share how I cover that up in a, in a minute. But I'm adding some Ken Oliver Color Burst Powder. I keep wanting to say spray, it's powder. And honestly, I just had these on my desk from the last video and I just thought, why not? I... And the more I play with them, the more I love them because, I mean, look at the color. It's so gorgeous. So I this is the turquoise color, and I just sprinkle it on a little bit and then add uh, some water. And then now I'm just kind of drying it, so I want that intense color. Um, 
and then I'm going to do the same to the other side. So just sprinkle a little bit on. It is very fine pigmented powder and it's, it is messy. I say this all the time when I use it, but it, I mean, the colors are just amazing and it's just so beautiful. So this is burnt orange and I was being a little brave and, um, I don't know, going out of my comfort zone a little bit. You know, I love to do that and it just stretches my imagination and it honestly not, I, I don't know how this is going to sound, but when I, um, go out of my comfort zone, it actually inspires me even more because I think, wow, I didn't, I wasn't really comfortable with this, but I tried it and look how it turned out, you know, and I don't know. I just think that we can all just kind of try something new sometimes and see what happens. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes you love it and sometimes you don't. And I normally wouldn't use orange, but like I said, I just was being a little, I was walking on the wild side, I guess. I don't know. It's early in the morning, so forgive me. And I'm not even done with my coffee, so I am very rambly today. <laughs> um... All right, so I added the burnt orange to the other side as well, and I'm trying to get it to kind of mix together, not to make a whole nother color, but just so that the orange gets in where some of the lighter turquoise color was. So you could see I'm trying to get it where, um, you know, just kind of where it flows together nicely, and uh, it mixes together fairly well so that it, you know, flows nice I guess is what I'm trying to say so that it doesn't look like you know there's stark lines of turquoise or blue and then orange so it just kind of all um, goes together and I thought I wanted to add a little bit of yellow but then after you'll see here in a second it just did not look right to me so I'm going to add the turquoise color again and um, just to kind of cover it up and the turquoise is very pigmented so it does a very good job in covering it up and at first I was a little worried because it was getting a little bit too lime greeny for me but then um, I added another little shake of um, the powder and it ended up um, covering it all up and then I add a little bit more of the burnt orange and um, you know, these powders, like I say, I've probably said like 10 times in this video already, they're very messy, but the results are gorgeous. As you could see, the colors are just so vibrant and um, pretty, and they are a mixture of different colors, like the pigment um, or the powders inside. So like the orange has a little bit of the yellow and the red in it. And you can kind of see that when you add the water to it. Um, at first, when I first started using them, it really bugged me. But after playing around with them, I have embraced the imperfections of colors, I guess. I don't know. And um, I just really love them now. So as you saw, I covered up the middle part with some gesso just to kind of tone down a lot of the over splatter of color. And now I am just painting some string uh, with some gesso. And then I am just wrapping it around the sides of the papers or the pages. And... I I don't know what I was going for, but I just was trying it out to see if I liked it, and I did. And I did that on both sides. Now I am taking a metal piece, adding some white gesso to it, and then some white crackle paste just to give it a little bit more interest and texture. And then now I'm adding some of that burnt orange uh, color burst powder. Spray it with some water, and then I'm going to go in with a little bit more. And then I felt like it was a little too orange, so I'm going to go in with some rust paste. And I haven't played with my rust paste in quite a while, and I had forgotten that I had ar I already have a rust paste um, 
paintbrush because the rust paste will ruin your paintbrush. It's I've tried to be careful with it. It just, I don't know what it is, the grittiness of the paint, it just ruins the paintbrushes. So I add a little bit of the red and then a little bit of the yellow. Now I'm going in with a little bit of the brown and then I add a little bit more of the red. And then now I'm going in with some of the turquoise, turquoise color burst powder. And then after that dries, I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of the red rust paste. And then it just kind of gives a really nice rusty effect. And I'm just adding a little bit of splatters with some Distress uh, Picket Fence Spray and just kind of making everything flow together and um, just adding a little bit more interest to the page. And it didn't um, end up being as stark white as I wanted. So I do end up using some some watered down gesso to add more splatters in the end. Uh, now I took some uh, watercolor paper and a Finnebear stamp set that has some butterflies in it. And then I use some Versamark ink with some white embossing powder to stamp it out and then um, to create a really cool emboss resist effect. And then I add some color burst powders, the same colors, the burnt orange and the turquoise. And then I spray the water on and you could see the magic happen. It's so cool. I love seeing this. And then I kind of dab it off because I just, I wanted a little bit of variation of the colors with the orange and the, um, the turquoise. And then I cut them out and then I'm going to add them to my page. But you could see here that I'm adding the splatters. So what I do is I take some white gesso or you can use regular white acrylic paint, but I think the heavy gesso works really well because um, it's just very thick. So you water it down just a little bit just to be able to you know, splatter on some of that white. And then you use a paintbrush and just kind of flick it off, I guess. And instead of tapping the paintbrush, because each thing will give you a different effect. So if I were to tap it on, it would just basically be um, like circle splatters and then using the acrylic block and then kind of flicking it off it creates a really cool a splatter effect a more of a splatter effect and i just i love it even more especially on these mixed media projects so i am adding the uh, butterflies to the pages now and i just kind of randomly put them and i wanted the big one on the left side where i put the little metal piece and then I'm going to put those little butterflies there and that is going to complete the project. I did not realize that my camera had died before I put the stickers on but again it says be kind to yourself and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did give it a thumbs up, share it on social media and leave me a comment down below. I really love reading your comments and I hope that you guys go check out my website and here is a couple more videos you might enjoy and I will catch you guys later. Bye.